invite you to come as we, <coughs> excuse me, sing unto the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know everybody's muted, so but I, I see you all saying, praise the Lord. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Um, we thank God for another Sunday service where we can gather together virtually to lift up the name of our Lord. Um, as I've been uh, thinking about and, and praying about what, what we should sing together for our time to worship, one of the things that has just really been a big um, part of, uh, particularly this summer, has been this uh, just growing in more and more and more in love with Jesus. Um, if I can admit that, you know, with the uncertainty that we're in, with the civil unrest that we're in, there's so much that um, I'm I've been questioning uh, so much. Um, that I've been looking to the Lord for direction on. But the one thing that has been just tremendous and I'm grateful for is Jesus's um, unchanging hand. And as walking with Christ for as long as I have and continuing to just loving him more and more and more, even in the middle of such um, unprecedented times has been um, just a blessing to me. So I'm just going to ask if we can all sing this song together. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one that our hearts adore. All things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we thought were dead. Things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again you cause your sun to shine on darkest night for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one God. Our hearts adore. The hopeless have found it. Oh, how we 
You know, I was thinking um, this past Friday, uh, Pastor Phil and I have uh, two anniversaries. And uh, this past Friday, we celebrated 15 years of marriage. And, um, you know, it's interesting because, you know, in year one, you know, you had fancy dinners and, you know, you go out and, you know, all the fanciness. And in year 15, we sat in the curbside pickup of a seafood restaurant eight in the car, kids in the back screaming and yelling for more ketchup and more juice and everything else. But there was still just this beauty in this aspect that love as it matures, um, you know, there's an amazing thing of the ability to appreciate even in the mundane or even in the, the regular things to appreciate the beauty of it. And, you know, I know sometimes that you know, as we think about God's love for us, you know, early on in faith, we, we tend to associate God's love for us with, you know, did he give me this blessing? Did he give me this blessing? Or did he do this for me? Or did he open this door for me? But as you mature in your faith and mature in your relationship with God, just the fact that God woke you up um, another day becomes something that you're so thankful for. Just the fact that God gave you breath in your lungs, um, just the fact that, you know, you have, um, you know, uh, loved ones and 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 that you get to enjoy life is is something that you you celebrate and rejoice in and and you know i i i often think about the fact that a lot of times our worship is contingent um uh, from a human standpoint it's contingent upon how we feel that god is doing at that very present moment but we get to a place when we mature in god where our worship 
is not contingent on our external circumstances. We become like David who says, um, I, I, I've learned whether, uh, or excuse me, Paul, I've learned whether I'm abounding or I'm abasing um, to be content. And in that contentment, I can worship God and I can give God praise. Some of you, you are experiencing a, a, a year of blessing. And, and, and truthfully, you know, I was thinking about some of the uh, new things that uh, we've been able to, you know, receive. Pastor Ophelia has her new living room set. And so, you know, uh, the old Mars Hill meeting space is, is uh, folded away. And now there is actually living room chairs in there. And I was thinking, I was like, thank God, this is a blessing that, you know, even in this time and in this season, um, we didn't have to pay for aftercare, so we saved money. Um, so <laughs> I feel like a Geico commercial. <laughs> um, but all that to say, um, you know, I, I know what it is to abound. And and some of us were going through difficult experiences. Some of us, uh, maybe we've transitioned with um, employment. Some of us, you know, maybe some of the opportunities that we had um, wanted are not present. Some of us, maybe we had a trip planned um, and this was going to be the year and none of the other countries want us right now. And so, um, you know, there are ups and downs that we're all going through, but through it all, we can say to God be the glory and that his name is praised in all the earth. And so um, we pray that as um, we come together, um, that we can um, just learn how to cry out, Jesus, we love you and we adore you and we worship your great name. Amen. Amen. Well, um, as we continue today, we want to continue in our study of first Samuel chapter number 18. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, First Samuel has all the kind of genres. It has action. It has suspense. It has, um, you know, everything there. And this week is where we get into the romance part of it. So all of you who love the romance part of, uh, of the scriptures, um, this is the part. Um, now, this is romance in terms of arranged marriages, but uh, that's the best we're going to get for right now uh, in uh, First Samuel. But uh, we're going to study together in First Samuel chapter chapter number um, 18. And again, thank you uh, to all of you for the congratulations on um, uh, 15, uh, excuse me, 15 years uh, of marriage. And uh, uh, we're thankful to the Lord for all that he has done, blessed us with three wonderful children. Uh, I was thinking the other day in um, five years, Nehemiah will be 16. And I said, wow, uh, man, what a what a journey! And and actually, um, you know, uh, our children are kind of inextricably tied to Mars Hill. Um, so uh, actually, uh, those of you who know the story, uh, Nehemiah was born um, just right around the time that Mars Hill was born, and um, we actually were having Bible study at the house. And so Nehemiah was born. I left Pastor Ophelia and came and taught Bible study. And I learned that that will be the last time I ever do that ever again. Um, and so she's never let that down. I'm still paying uh, back for that indiscretion, um, but uh, we thank God for wisdom and maturity. You know, as a young church planter, you know, that was my baby. And uh, Pastor Ophelia let me know that I had a real baby uh, to take care of. and if I ever left her again like that, um, there would be a price to pay. Amen. Amen. Well, um, as we look here in 1 Samuel chapter number 18, uh, last week uh, we spent uh, time together and we um, prayerfully got through nine verses. Um, praise God. Uh, we hope to get through the rest of the chapter um, today as we're studying. And so we'll do a little bit of a recap and then we will um, uh, uh, um, hopefully finish out the chapter today. And so um, we're going to start at verse number 10. Again, this is the story of Saul and David. We know uh, in the previous chapter, 1 Samuel 17, Saul killed, excuse me, David killed Goliath. And um, in the earlier part of the 
uh, First Samuel 18, we remember uh, they were singing the song, Saul has killed his thousands, David has killed his tens of thousands. And so uh, this week we're going to talk about success again and jealousy, and we'll examine a couple of uh, thoughts around that um, as we read today. So uh, let's begin. Uh, we're going to read uh, verse 10 through verse number 30. And so, um, uh, Brother David, I'll ask you if you can read 10 through 20. And then Sister Davida, I'll ask you if you can read 20 through 30. And uh, um, let's uh, read together, and then we will uh, begin to dive in. The next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully upon Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the harp as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand and he hurled it saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, but had left Saul. So he sent David away from him and gave him command over a thousand men. And David led the troops in their campaigns. In everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. When Saul saw how successful he was, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he led them in their campaigns. Saul said to David, here is my older daughter, Merib. I will give her to you in marriage. Only serve me bravely and fight the battles of the Lord. For Saul said to himself, I will not raise a hand against him. Let the Philistines do that. But David said to Saul, who am I and what is my family or my father's clan in Israel that I should become the king's son-in-law? So when the time came for Merib, Saul's daughter, to be given to David, she was given in marriage to Adriel of Mahola. Now Saul's daughter Michael was in love with David, and when they told Saul about it, he was pleased. I will give her to him, he thought so that she may be a snare to him, and so that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. So Saul said to David, now you have a second opportunity to become my son-in-law. Then Saul ordered his attendants, speak to David privately and say, look, the king is pleased with you and his attendants all like you, now become his son-in-law. They repeated these words to David, but David said, do you think it is a small matter to become the king's son-in-law? I'm only a poor man and little known. When Saul's servants told him that what David had said, Saul replied, say to David, the king wants no other price for the bride than a hundred Philistine foreskins to take revenge on his enemies. Saul's plan was to have David fall by the hands of the Philistines. When the attendants told David these things, he was pleased to become the king's son-in-law. So before the allotted time elapsed, David and his men went out and killed 200 Philistines. He brought their foreskins and presented the full number to the king so that he might become the king's son-in-law. Then Saul gave him his daughter, Michael, in marriage. When Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that his daughter, Michael, loved David, Saul became still more afraid of him and he remained his enemy the rest of his days. The Philistine commanders continued to go out to battle, and as often as they did, David met with more success than the rest of Saul's officers, and his name became well known. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, you know, one important thing as we're studying the scriptures, and, and uh, each of you as you do your personal study too as well, um, is how to really dissect and, and really um, understand uh, biblical text. Now, one thing we do know is that uh, the Bible was not written in English. And so, um, you know, we are dealing with uh, translations. And so um, uh, you want to, uh, there's what's called a dynamic equivalent and a word for word translation. Word for word translation will take every single word and translate every single word um, out of the original language into English. Um, but it may lose the essence or the meaning of what is being said. Uh, a dynamic equivalent will basically try to uh, respect the word for word translation, but also will adapt it so that the meaning comes out and is in place. But uh, we do have a pretty good understanding that we can get from the English translation of the text as we study it. And so one of the things that you can pay attention to is 
common words or themes. And so, you know, uh, as we look to the, the this text this morning, um, what's a common word that or theme uh, that you see in this particular text? For theme, I would say jealousy. Jealousy, yep. That's a common theme, yep. Fear. What else? Oh, fear. I'm sorry, fear? Oh, I'm sorry. I I, I keep on uh, talking over you one more time. Fear. Fear. Okay, yeah, okay. They hear you correctly. So, okay, perfect, yep. What else? Do you see a word repeated over and over again? Starts with the S, ends with the S. Begins with suck. <laughs> Success. <laughs> um, it's in there. Um, one of the things that is talked about and compared is Saul's jealousy versus David's success. And we're going to talk about again the focus of the comparison and contrast uh, in the scriptures of these two biblical figures. So let's begin with a recap, um, verse one through nine. Again, we said, First Samuel is a book of comparison and contrast. And so um, as we're reading the text, we wanna pay attention to the places where um, the writer has specifically um, compared and contrast two different individuals. We compared and contrast Eli and Samuel, and we talked about that last week, Samuel and Saul, and then we also now see Saul and David. Um, and so you see these comparisons and contrasts, uh, even to the point where the Lord says that David is a man after God's own heart, and he rebukes Saul because Saul is a man after his own heart. Saul is a man who only cares about himself. Now, you know, every time I read this scripture and this passage, um, it becomes relevant for me because you see it played out in modern day times. We see Saul-like figures uh, in our political system. We see Saul-like figures um, who um, are, throughout history, you can see that played out. And so um, as we look at this today, um, we're reminded of this comparison and contrast and how we live out um, the way that God desires for us to live, not just the way that we see as a way to live. And so, um, you know, one thing we talked about was that uh, the scriptures highlighted about Jonathan becoming one in spirit with David. And so, you know, one thing I just want to mention is that uh, we all need some people in our lives. We need some Samuels. Samuel is the wise, you know, person who um, will share and help keep you on track and also correct you when you need to be corrected. We need some Samuels in our lives who are willing to say, hey, you're going the wrong direction, you know, uh, turn around, do this. But we also need some Jonathans. Um, Jonathans are people who are running alongside of us. Jonathans are the ones who, uh, you know, in, in common vernacular, we would say they're our ride or dies. You know, they're the ones who, you know, no matter what's going through, they'll be with us. And Jonathan and David were, um, uh, we'd use this word, kindred spirits. And, you know, I shared last week about how um, you know, the first time I heard my bishop speak, it just was, I, I knew I needed to learn and glean from him. And, 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 you know, it's one thing to have a mentor who's like that, but we also need some people who, um, you know, can energize us and encourage us. And so, you know, when I was in college, we had a, a, a trio, it was uh, myself, John and Philip. Um, and, you know, it's crazy when I look back at all the things that we are doing, we are running businesses, writing music, we had a music production company. Um, you know, we were doing all kinds of things, but it was because we were kindred in spirit. And because of that, you know, like we were, I would go over his house, you know, and I was supposed to just hang out, you know, and it would be like 4 a.m. the next morning. And I'd be like, man, I'm just going to sleep the night here. And, but it was just this kindred spirit within us. And so I hope each of us have, um, you know, some Jonathans in our lives. And especially to the men on this call, I want to speak um, to you is that, 
um, I can't remember the exact statistics, but it, it basically said that men, um, you know, over 30 years old do not have a lot of male friendships or uh, any friendships uh, uh, whatsoever. And, um, you know, the truth of the matter is we need people in our lives. And um, especially as believers, if we're going to run the race that God has called for us to run, um, it behooves us um, to uh, find some people um, who are kindred spirits with us that we can uh, run together and run towards righteousness and goodness. Um, one, you know, note I wanted to uh, mention, again, we talked about the whole aspect of uh, whether the relationship between Jonathan and um, David was more of a, uh, a, a more than platonic, but was more of a, a homosexual relationship. Um, there are some who have um, posited that this was the, you know, an example of a homosexual relationship. Again, um, I don't believe that the biblical text um, uh, connotates that. And I think it's also important that we don't import um, our contemporary culture into the culture of Jonathan and David and the relationship that he had. Um, and so um, the last, uh, not the last part, but um, the next part that we talked about in verse one through nine is that uh, this phrase that whatever Saul sent him referring to uh, David to do, David did it so successfully. Um, what an amazing testimony that um, God was with Saul I mean, with David, so much so that whatever he did, he did it successfully. We only see, uh, you know, we see this in some other biblical uh, figures. Um, one of the most prominent ones that come to my mind is uh, Joseph, um, who um, the Lord gave him favor. And so even as he was serving um, in government, um, uh, the land was blessed because of Joseph. And so we see the same kind of pattern here with David where, um, you know, David, the Lord was with David so much so that um, whatever he did, it was successful. Um, and we talked about the, uh, the Hebrew word here uh, for success is sekal, and um, it means to be prudent and circumspect and have wisdom, insight, and understanding, but it's not used in the traditional sense of human ingenuity. It's used in the context of receiving and utilizing wisdom from God. And so what that means is that it's not using a sense of saying, wow, he was so smart. Um, it was, he was so submitted to God that it was almost like God was speaking through him and everything that he did and said. And that's, that's, a, there's a difference between the two, because there are some who you met who, you know, you're like, wow, they're smart, but it's, it seems like it's all human learned knowledge. Um, but there's a difference when um, people have wisdom and insight, but it is really um, you can see that they're leaning on God and that God is the source of strength. Um, and uh, so any comments about that um, beginning portion? Okay. Um, so then last week, we also spent a good chunk of our time going through a couple of um, verses because we wanted to take time because this is an important concept because if we see the fact that the David was successful in what he did the the question or the application that we should take away from that is um, how do we how how do we become successful um, the same way and and the question that we asked was how do we know that God is with us and prospering us and granting us success and so there are a couple of key takeaways. Now, again, this was not an exhaustive search of the scriptures. And so these are not the only principles, but there are a couple key principles that we um, took away from our study of the different passages last week. The first thing is trust in the Lord. Um, you know, it, the, the, the Proverbs writer, uh, writer um, talks about trusting the Lord with all your heart and leaning not into your own understanding. We also saw it in the Luke passage that you've got to put your trust and your faith in the Lord. And, and trusting in the Lord means making him Lord, not just a side piece or you know just a, a add-on to your life. God is not an add-on to your life. He is also not just a Sunday morning ritual that you do and expect blessings the rest of your week. God wants to be Lord of your life. 
And as Lord of your life, it means that he is involved in every single aspect. So that means I invite God into my finances. That means I invite God into my marriage. That means I invite God into my singleness. That means I invite God into uh, my workplace. I invite God into all the areas of who I am. And I've got to trust that the Lord has wisdom and insight for every one of those areas. And what I love about the scriptures is the scriptures don't just talk about how to worship God on Sunday. You know, if, if, if the scriptures were written in the way that some of us live out our Christianity, it would be, this is what you do when you wake up on a Sunday, you feel like going to church and worshiping God and giving him glory. But the scriptures tell us about loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so I'm even teaching Nehemiah that in his soccer, how do you give God glory through your athletic abilities and through the way that you play so that when you lose, you don't lose heart, but you are faithful in continuing to uh, hone your skills and, and to craft a, the gift that God has given to you. So trust in the Lord and then be faithful with whatever you have. We know being faithful over the little, God will make you ruler over much. Key takeaway, we, we know that God is with us when we have a heart to be faithful with whatever you have. The next thing is an important aspect of uh, walking in success. You cannot continue to walk in success or walk in success at all if you're not renewing your mind daily. Renew your mind daily so that you can discern God's pathways to prosper um, or success. Um, and, and I use prosper here because, you know, success has kind of been tainted um, by I, our worldly ideas, you know, the ways that we look at, um, you know, thinking about, um, you know, what success means and what success looks like. You know, I'm probably going to, um, uh, I'm probably going to um, uh, age myself here a little bit, um, but how many of you guys remember MTV Cribs? All right, all right. A few, few, few of the old heads uh, uh, there uh, are, are alongside of me and remember this. But um, basically, it went into households of super, well, supposed households of superstars, because we learned after the fact that you know half of these houses were not their houses. They just filmed it, you know, in order to make it look like um, they had these plush um, houses. But it is the reminder of the fact that you know we, we, we. The world portrays um, success as lavish things, material success. And when you interview people who've attained material success, what they'll tell you is it never brings you happiness and joy. And so if you're not renewing your mind daily, you will be chasing after something that is temporal, but lose out on those things that are eternal. And when we're prospering, it doesn't mean that all of our things are eternal things, but it means that we are trusting in the fact of God blessing us even in the small and mundane things. And so renew your mind daily um, is another key takeaway that we said. Um, follow the Lord's instructions for the abundant life. Um, this is just real, real quickly. You know, it, it amazes me how many people think they know better than God. Um, and we wouldn't say that with our own words, but our actions betray us. And, you know, a lot of times when God says, do this, and you will prosper in your ways, we go the opposite way in order to say, well, I can do this and still do it. I mean, it reminds me of uh, my son, Nehemiah. He's in the preteen ages. And so those of you who have, uh, you know, nieces or nephews or cousins who are in preteen ages, you, you realize that is the age where they get a download of I know everything um, a disease and um, that disease is contagious amongst preteen kids. And so they spread it amongst their friends. And, and um, so in everything, they know everything. And so the minute I tell Nehemiah to go and do something one way, he said, well, I can do it this way and I'll still get the, the same result. Only for him to go down that road and just Discover, no, it doesn't work that way. Um, but it, we do the same thing to the Lord. 
follow the Lord's instructions. Um, he gives us his word so that we can walk it out. And then finally, stay faithful. Stay faithful to the Lord's instructions. You know, it's hard when you, because a lot of us, we start off on the right path. But then when things get difficult, what happens is we say we give up or we turn the other way. And so um, let me pause right there. Any questions on those key takeaways or any comments on those key takeaways that we talked about last week? Okay. Um, so the last uh, section that, um, uh, in our recap was um, success soon became a threat to Saul. Uh, when the townspeople noticed Saul's success, uh, excuse me, David's success, it affected Saul's insecurities about his own strength and success. And um, Saul's response, he was very angry. And so they credit David with tens of thousands, when ten thousands, and me with only thousands. Next, they will be making him their king. And so we saw that a couple of things. Saul couldn't deal with someone being better than him. There will always be someone better than you. Celebrate them, learn from them, but don't be jealous of them. You walk in your gifting. And, and I'll share my own personal testimony. I had to learn that as a pastor um, because, you know, when I first started preaching, you know, I was upset because I, I wasn't, you know, getting a crowd like T.D. Jakes. Um, and so, you know, here's the thing you got to remember. T.D. Jakes has been preaching for 30 something years. I'm just now starting preaching. And then I'm trying to compare myself to T.D. Jakes. You know, he's had 30 years to perfect his craft. And, and comparison, um, comparison kills us. Comparison kills us. And, you know, the other issue is that a lot of times comparison comes in because we're dealing with our own insecurities. You know, one of the blessings that as I've aged, I've learned to deal with is I know my own insecurities and failures, and I can acknowledge that. I can acknowledge I'm, I'm sensitive in this area. I can acknowledge those things. And because I can own those things, when they start to creep up, I can call it out and I can say, okay, this is, this is something that is sensitive to me. Let me come, let me regroup, let me um, um, re-engage. Um, but I don't have to let that insecurity drive me. And when we look at Saul, that's exactly what he did. Uh, he let those insecurities drive him. And so as a result, it said at the end of that um, uh, passage, and from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. And so in the next two chapters, we will see several attempts by Saul to harm David. And jealousy is a sin because it makes an unrighteous comparison. And the New Testament writer reminds us that for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. So um, as we transition from the recap into this section, I want to ask this question. Why do we struggle with jealousy and how do we deal with it when we recognize that it is happening in our own life? Anyone have any thoughts on that? Well, How do we deal with jealousy? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, you, 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 you can't be jealous without making a comparison. Mm -hmm. So we come back to, to the point that you just made, Pastor. Um, I, I read someplace that, that uh, uh, comparison is the mother of discontent. Mm -hmm. and, and I really think it's true. Uh, you know, when you find yourself comparing you to someone else, I mean, you're already down the wrong, you're already down the wrong road. For one yep. thing, it's almost always an invalid comparison because people are never equal. People never yep. had the same upbringing. They never had the same opportunities. You know, they, everything, every possible variable you could come up with is different. Mm -hmm. So the comparison is, is inherently invalid. Yeah. And whenever you sense yourself doing that, you just have to stop and just remember that you are who God says you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Thank you, Brother David. Others? I think, um, you know, it, it, it comes back to a kind of self-centeredness and a mm -hmm. selfishness of I deserve, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I deserve mm -hmm. what that person has, right? Mm -hmm. um, why don't I have it? So I think that is off is also a root. So that comparison mm -hmm. piece too, but I think mm -hmm. that, and I think that the root of it is like the self-centeredness, the selfishness that I deserve mm -hmm. something. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Thank you, uh, Sister John. Uh, others? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, kind of third both of those. I think it's also um, taking our eyes off of what God has in store for us. You know, He might have told us to do this is what I'm gonna focus you on, and then all of a sudden you're looking at somebody else. So it's taking your eyes off of God's promise for you. Mm -hmm. And then I I go with uh, looking back into I think it was Matthew 20 um, when the workers were working in the field and the workers mm -hmm. that were working for six hours. The, mm -hmm. the work the uh, owner said i'm going to pay you a denarius one denarius yeah yeah and the yeah. same thing the workers that were coming back in the last hour i'm going to pay you a denarius yeah well, why are you being jealous when i promised you i was going to pay you a denarius what does it matter what i'm going to do with my money to the other person i'm bringing in within the hour who i'm also mm -hmm. going to pay denarius didn't i fulfill my promise to you yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah. and, and I, uh, brother adam you raise uh, an important point is that we have to learn how to run the race that is set out for us. And I think so many times we run other people's races. Um, and that is that, I mean, I'm not saying this as an indictment on others. I'm saying this as an indictment on myself. We run other people's races. Now, there's a difference between being inspired by others and running others' races. So, you know, I think of a John Lewis who um, just passed away and, and I'm inspired by John Lewis to, Congressman John Lewis, um, to step up my advocacy game. And, 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 and he inspires me to push forward. But there's a difference if I'm trying to be John Lewis when that's not who necessarily God has called me to be. And so, um, you know, I think one of the challenges is that we, we measure our life and, and a lot of times that comes into comparison, we measure our life by uh, incomplete or incorrect standards. And the only way, not the only way, but one of the ways um, that we get back to the godly standard is by spending time in God's word um, because it helps us realize what the correct standard is and helps us to measure up to God's standard, not to our own standard. Um, anybody else have any thoughts about why we struggle with jealousy and, and how do we uh, deal with it when we recognize that it's happening in our own people? Yeah, bring you back on what Adam said. You know, we can think about when we're comparing with others, why is God loving him more than, mm -hmm. you know, than he's loving me for the truth that God loves everyone equally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not only does he love us equally, he loves us with an abundant love. And, and it says uh, that you may comprehend with all the saints how wide and how deep and how vast and how long is his love for us. And so it is this aspect that we also measure how much God loves us sometimes incorrectly. And, and part of that is have to learn how, you know, that God loves me even when I don't get the same things other people get. Because sometimes God loves us and withholds. Has God ever loved you by withholding something from you? Uh, how many of you can testify that God's love was shown when he withhold, withheld something from you because he knew that he may have been able to give that to someone else, but if he gave that to you, that would be a, a hindrance to your walk of faith. And so um, even for me, I wanted to go to law school and I believed I was going to go to law school right after undergrad. I finished my degree at uh, uh, University of Michigan. I actually turned down a job, starting salary, $60,000. I mean, back then that was a lot of money. Now that's like, <laughs> that's like peanuts. But I turned down a job because I believed that God was going to send me to law school. Now, I didn't go to law school at that time, but later on, but God withheld that from me, but that also taught me to draw closer to him. And later on, he fulfilled that promise. And I went to law school and um, uh, became an intellectual property lawyer. So um, any last comments or thoughts before we move on? It, I, I think, mm -hmm. go ahead. 
uh, go ahead, Davida, and then we'll have Kevin us. Okay, us. sorry. Um, I was just gonna say that at the root of it, um, the jealousy is covetousness. Mm -hmm. Like not only do I devalue the gift and the role that God has given me to play, but I want your gift and I want your role because I see that as more successful or glorious or whatever it happens to be. Um, I was thinking of John the Baptist and how mm -hmm. he was humble enough. You know, he was famous in his own way. People knew him. He had great renown. He had crowds that followed him. But when he saw Jesus, he said, I must decrease, that he must increase. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't mean that he didn't have a part to play. It didn't mean that he wasn't successful, but he recognizes that Jesus's role was greater and more yeah. important. And at that point, there was, there was going to be a sort of a switch. Um, so I think what, why David was successful, part of it was his humility and his recognition mm -hmm. that, you know, whatever God had given him didn't make him better or worse than anyone else, but that was his role. Yeah. And sometimes if we're jealous of other people, it's because we don't value the role that God has given us to play. It was absolutely John the Baptist's role to eat locusts and wild honey. I'm glad that that was his calling and not mine. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sister Davida and Brother Kevin. No, definitely want to echo that. I, I, I think it, it comes back to glory, right? Um, we, we just finished watching, um, well, not just, but uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, finished watching Last Dance um, mm -hmm. with uh, the story of Michael Jordan and, yeah. and the roles as we go through. And it, it makes me think of the scenario with Scottie Pippen and, and, and Tony Kukoc as the, yeah. that last mm -hmm. play was drawn up. Um, to the fact that um, who was actually going to win the game. And, and Scottie Pippen decides that he's actually not going out on the court. Um, mm -hmm. And he, because he had actually forgotten the game plan, um, mm -hmm. it wasn't the fact that it, the Bulls were supposed to win, um, yeah. but Scottie Pippen wanted the glory. He didn't mm -hmm. want to be in a lesser seat, um, you know, to say that the play isn't going through me. Um, and yeah. so that, that, I think that's, that's a portion of it is um, glory and forgetting the game plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are all great points and, and things we ought to remember. Now, here's the challenge. We know what to do a lot of times, but when we get into the situations, we forget a lot of times. And this is where our Jonathans and our Samuels come into play. Our Jonathans and our Samuels call us out when we're in the middle. You know, if you have a Jonathan, they will sit there and say, you are jealous. You're jealous of them, man. You'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm not jealous. And they, they will call you out. But sometimes you don't see it yourself. But you need those Jonathans and those Samuels in your life to help you recognize it. Because we all know how, that we should not walk in jealousy. We all know we should not be covetous. Uh, covetous. Um, we all know that we should not be trying to get the glory for ourselves. But we fall prey into those areas. And so get Jonathan's and Samuel's in your lives. I can't emphasize it enough. We need one another. And that's the beauty of Mars Hill Fellowship is that we're striving to be in one another's lives and be a healthy community of fellowship. So um, let's pick up uh, verse number 10. I know we, we spent a little bit of time on the recap, but we're, we're going we're gonna to hopefully sail through uh, the rest of the chapter. So um, the Bible says next day the evil spirit came forcefully upon Saul. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, um, you know, one of the interesting things, and for those of you who are kind of Bible nerds, um, you know, it, it is this notion of, you know, how can an evil spirit come from God? Um, and again, remember here what I said, we're dealing with the translation. So um, the English is not quite a, uh, a one for one of the thought, but um, basically, um, basically uh in some translation it says instead of an evil spirit from came from god in some translation said a, a tormenting spirit uh came from god now we must first understand god's character and nature god is completely righteous he hates evil and never does anything unjust um evil god cannot you know if you think of god he cannot coexist in the same presence as evil. And that's why our sins separate us from God. Because even when God wants to love us, our sins are the barrier. That's why Jesus had to come in 
and wash our sins and pay the price for our sins. And that's what grants us reconciliation or access back to God. But I mean, think of it like a superhero movie where, you know, like sin is almost like, you know, sin bounces. It cannot coexist in the same realm or sphere of where uh, God is. And so <clears throat> when we read this here, um, the question would be, well, then how can God send evil or how this, how can this be from God? Now, one of the things we recognize is God created a universe with built-in rewards and punishments that reinforce divine moral law. And so that means that, you know, if you drive uh, into, a, into a tree, you're going to hurt the car. That's a natural law. It is, you know, you can you can pray all you want, but you know, there's a law of physics and a law of gravity, and 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 if you defy those natural orders, um, there are consequences to that. And so, so in essence, these uh, verses, the, the verse is not that God was the agent of torment, but that God allowed a tormenting spirit or demonic oppression to go forward upon Saul. And so you kind of think of it like Job, um, instead of, um, you know, God sending a, a spirit that, that uh, caused Job these challenges, God didn't prevent and he took his hands away so that a, a tormenting spirit uh, could come upon Saul. Any questions about that? Okay, so that tormenting spirit comes and it comes in a way that um, one translation says, <clears throat> excuse me, Saul began to rave in his house like a madman. Um, and so it was almost like Saul had a mental illness um, and, and, and this came upon Saul. Um, but it was interesting because David was able to minister to Saul through the playing of a harp. Now, let me pause for a second. Let's think about how many gifts God has given to Saul, I mean to David. What gifts has God given to David? Well, he, has a, he has the gift of music. So he, can, he has a gift of music, yep, what right. else? He's a natural leader, <laughs> fearless. Uh -huh. um, he's a shepherd. You yep. know, the skills that come with that. Um, he knows how to be a friend, obviously, yep. with Jonathan. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I mean, David is working out as a shepherd, you know, and, and taking care of sheep, but yet he can, he has musical gifts and is abundantly blessed in music. And he's also good, you know, he's, he's, he's good at creativity. He's able to take a slingshot and, and kill Goliath. And so, you know, he has a wide variety of gifts and talents. And this goes back to the concept where I said, be faithful with everything that God places into your hand, because you never know how God will use that gift and how it will make room. Your, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. You never know how your gift when you perfect it and, 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 and use your gift, how God will open doors for that. And so, you know, I, I, I always, you know, Professor Mars Hill, we want to be a place where, um, you know, the creative arts are a part of ministry because that's a, that's a, a beautiful expression uh, of, of the gift that God gives. And, and a lot of times churches don't make room for creatives to have a space. And so I'm so thankful that we have uh, Brother Luis and our other and Shireen and, and other of our creative, especially creative. And, and there are many creatives who are here. I'm just naming them by name, but I, I want them to have a space where they feel that they're not just here as hired guns, but that their, their gift has a space for them um, because I believe that that gift God has a specific, just as important as the preaching gift, God has a place for that gift. And so we recognize that we need to create space for the different gifts. And, and in that, so, uh, David was able to minister um, to um, Saul. But despite David's ministry to Saul, um, Saul had another plan in hand. 
Um, you know, I love how the text just basically says, yeah, Saul just casually picks up a javelin and starts to think, why don't I throw it at him and pin him against the wall? I'm like, yes, he's really dealing with some severe mental illness. If, you know, that's just his random thoughts, you know, that come up and he just has a javelin that he picks up and throws at him. And not only is this thing crazy, the craziness of this is this happens not once, but twice, twice. I mean, the first time it happens, if I'm David, I'm like, all right, I'm done. Now I ain't messing with this. Nah, Saul is crazy. Nah, I'm done. I'm I'm out of here. I mean, come on, come on, think about it. If someone, if you can, can you imagine you're at your workplace, you're sitting at your desk, and all of a sudden your boss picks up a, 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 a paper, a letter opener and throws it at you at your desk, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be like, you're crazy, I'm out of here. Um, and so, but somehow David stays there and and Saul tries it again. Um, and you know what is eye-opening is that the writer of First Samuel gives us insight as to what was really going on. Um, Adam, can you read that in bold um, there on the screen? Sure. Saul was unafraid of David, for the Lord was with David and had turned away from Saul. So Saul wasn't oblivious. Saul knew the Lord had left him. Saul knew that not only had the Lord left him, but that he knew that there were others who were better than him. And so let that sink in for a minute. The radical truth was that Saul knew that God was with David and that made Saul jealous of him. Now, when we look at this from the frame of Saul, it is a recognition that instead of trying to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And even though I may not have the kingship back, May you, may you turn me around so that I fall into the right place with you. He instead let it be a place of jealous. Now, if we turn the frame from Saul over to David, we need to recognize is that when God's favor is upon you, it, it will not always open doors for you. Let me say that again for you. When God's favor is upon you, it will not always open doors for you. Sometimes when God's favor is upon you, you will become the object of criticism and rebuke. And it's not because you're insubordinate or don't pay attention. It is because God's hand is upon your life. Do, do you capture that? Because oftentimes we think, well, God's favor, you know, we sing song, God's favor, God's favor, God's favor, God's favor upon you. And then you, you encounter the Saul's in your life. And sometimes God's favor will make you a bigger target for others' jealousy and for others' criticism of you, not because you've done anything wrong, but because God's hand is upon you. Does that make sense to everybody? So it also means that you can't be afraid or you can't be frustrated when the favor of the Lord causes others' frustrations or jealousy to be manifest. So because of the fallen human nature, jealousy and envy are a part of this world. And so successful believers, I want you to pay attention to this. Successful believers must practice grace and humility in the face of jealousy and envy and keep their eyes on the ultimate goal, which is pleasing God rather than men. So what does that mean? Even when you are the object of someone's jealousy and envy, even when you're the object of someone's criticism, if you know that you're walking in what the Lord has called for you to do, keep your eyes on the prize. 
And this is something that I need to remind people because oftentimes what happens is that when we are walking in God's favor and then we experience the pushback of others' jealousy or envy, we start to fight their fight. We start to get entangled in that mess. And as a result, we lose heart on the race that God has called for us to run. But we've got to run the race that he's called for us to run. So, uh, Brother Luis, can you read that scripture there in Galatians 1 and 10? Or am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Amen. Um, and then Sister Shireen, can you read 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 9, please? Which one, sorry? Uh, the second scripture there. Uh, the 2 Corinthians 5. Yeah, yeah. Um, so whether we are here in this body or Amen. Amen. So our goal should be to please God. That means, you know, if I can use common vernaculars, haters gonna hate, but we still got to run the race that God has called for us to run. Don't, don't let people trip you up on your race. You know, one of the things is that when you run in a marathon, you know, people will challenge you to run quicker than your pace. But the key thing is that they may run quicker than your pace, but then they may lose, you know, three quarters of the way through the marathon. You've got to know your pace and run your race. And so, yes, we are challenged and we ought to spark one another on towards good deeds. But don't let, you know, don't let looking at other people and say, well, they've got this. And so I've got to have this by now. Um, just tr bless God and, and give thanks to him. That's why it, it is good to have a, a heart of gratitude because it makes you be grateful for what you have instead of being uh, uh, uncontent for what you don't have. Um, the other thing about jealousy and envy, jealousy and envy will also cause others to do actions that uh, to put you in harm's way. But it's amazing, even with an assignment that was designed to kill David, he still found success in it. Uh, you know, this is a bit, this is amazing to me, is that when God's hand is upon you, even when the, you know, he, even when your enemies try to plot against you, God turns around for good. I mean, that, 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 that blows my mind, the fact that Saul was plotting against David, but God's hand was so forcefully upon him that even his plot couldn't succeed. His plot caused David to have great success. So um, David, uh, Saul sends David away and gives him a command over a thousand men. And um, what Saul's idea was, was that, well, if I send him away, the Philistines will kill him in battle. Um, and um, he recognizes that this doesn't happen. And so he begins to say that he was even more afraid of him. And all of Israel and Judah loved David because he led them in their campaigns and was successful. So when we go on to see, um, Saul then now switches his tactics. This is where the kind of romance part comes in. And so, um, but these are all continued schemes of jealousy. Um, and when jealousy is in our heart, it becomes like an idol. And any idol, you have to worship it. Any idol in your life, you have to worship it, which means you have to sacrifice things in order to worship it. And so when jealousy is in our heart, it becomes like an idol and we worship it with even crazy ways to fulfill its desires. And so Saul's next way to deal with his jealousy was to give his older daughter Merab in marriage to David and to allow David to be killed in war against the Philistines. Now, let's not like just pass over or gloss over the fact Saul is just like, well, just take my daughter and marry her so that you can die. I mean, like, um, do you care about your daughter? Um, do you love your daughter? I mean, because it kind of seems like you don't. And we're going to see it, especially with Michael, about what was going on. And so um, while David was unaware of Saul's schemes, he was very discerning. And so David then says to Saul, who am I and my father and my family's plan that I should become the king's son-in-law? And so we see here in the text um, that his oldest daughter, Merab, is given to another 
oh man there. Um, but <laughs> Saul, Saul is relentless. I mean, could you imagine if Saul had the same level of relentless for the Lord? I mean, that would be amazing, but he was relentless in his jealousy. Um, and so Saul tries again. And, but this time he recognizes what he did wrong with the first one. Um, so now he says, Michael, she realizes he's in love with David. And so not saying this is a beautiful thing, this is beautiful romance. Um, Saul didn't even care for or love his daughters. He only saw them as a means to an end. Again, um, I read this story and there are so many contemporary parallels. You can see it however you want to see it. Um, but I see the Saul-like figure in our politics, in our government, in, in, in many situations. And so Saul says, I will give him to her, he thought, so that she may be a snare to him and so that the harm of the Philistines may be against him. Dang it. He's using his daughter again. Like that, 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 that I'm just like, how? Saul, how is your jealousy raging so much that even your daughters just become a means to an opportunity? And so Saul said to David, now you'll have a second opportunity to become my son-in-law. And he thinks again, um, you know, David being married, he'll be, you know, he'll fall in love and he won't be a, a good soldier and fighter and she'll be a snare to him um, so that he won't really concentrate on uh, being a soldier and then he'll make mistakes. But Saul is also more crafty this time. He says, well, he employs his, ser his servants to spruce up the offer. Um, and so Saul replied to David, say this to the king. Um, the king wants no other price for the bride than a hundred Philistine foreskin to take revenge on his enemies. Saul's plan was to have David fall by the hands of the Philistines. Now, um, we also have to understand the cultural um, aspect that was happening. So um, many of you know, uh, uh, Pastor Faye and I are both from Ghana, and um, in, in Ghanaian culture, we have what's called a dowry. Um, and so when I, um, uh, I I said that I wanted to marry um, Pastor Ophelia, I can't just go and propose um, to her. I had to go to my parents. Um, my parents had to go to um, Pastor Ophelia's family members and say, um, our son wants to marry your daughter. And then we have what's called a traditional it's called a traditional engagement. And in that traditional engagement, there are gifts. So I had to buy um, shoes, uh, traditional cloth, um, a suitcase. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're meant to be symbolic. Um, and basically, um, but in the olden days, it was showing that, um, you know, one, I could take care of her and it was promising that. Now in other cultures, it's also um, to pay for, to the family for, um, uh, you know, the loss of a, a son or a daughter, um, you also see the dowry. And so, um, you know, in this particular case, David was thinking, well, this is the king. How can I ever pay a royal dowry? I'm just a poor man. I don't have anything. And, um, you know, Saul comes back with, um, you know, I don't want anything but, you know, the foreskin of a hundred uh, Philistines. And, and in it, what Saul was really asking for was David would try and go out there and kill these Philistines. And Saul's thought was David would be killed in the midst of these actions. So he was plotting again. Um, and so in that, David not only goes out and kills the Philistine enemies, he asked, um, Saul only asked for a hundred <laughs> but David actually kills 200 Philistines and brings them back. And Saul gave his daughter Michael in marriage, but it was also reluctantly. And we see another conclusion, and it is the most direct comparison of um, uh, David and Saul. Brother David, can you read that for us there, verse 28 and 29, please? Excuse me. When Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that his daughter Michael loved David, Saul became still more afraid of him and he remained his enemy the rest of his days. Yeah, yeah. You know, at the end of it all, Saul kept trying different things 
but the hand of the Lord was upon David. And Saul didn't know how to respond to that. You know, oftentimes our challenge is we don't know how to respond to some of the things that are we're most vulnerable in. And, you know, uh, I, I said that here and I'll, I'll repeat it again. Godly success will often cause others to fear your gifting. When you're walking in the success that God has given to you, um, you know, I don't mean this as a, as a proud statement, but I do mean it as a realization that when you're walking in godly success, it will often cause others to have envy and jealousy. And remember, it's not you that they're going after. It is the God in you that scares them. And what you have to do is be strong, be faithful, and continue doing the work that God has called for you to do. You may need to call out that jealousy sometimes, but always ask for discernment for God how to deal with the situation. Sometimes God will have you stay quiet and be faithful, and sometimes God will call you to speak up and call out what is going on. But whatever it is, be faithful and be strong. Any questions? Okay. Um, and then the ending of the chapter ends this way. David was met with even more success, even more success because the hand of the Lord was upon him. Um, and verse 30 says, the Philistine commanders continued to go out of battle and as often as they did, David met with more success than the rest of Saul's officers and his name became well known. So we see here two different things. Success and jealousy. <clears throat> jealousy became an idol to um, Saul, which caused him to do all kinds of crazy things, to plot, to scheme, <clears throat> to try and get his way to overcome. But they often prove not. Success, godly success, when God was with you, when God was driving you, it opened doors, but it also caused others to be envious of David. But David didn't lose heart he kept on remaining faithful to what the Lord had called him to do. And so that's the end there of 1 Samuel chapter number 18. And um, as is our custom, uh, for those of you who are new uh, with us, um, we just spend a moment kind of um, sharing a nugget or a thought that we got from today's study and uh, what we learned from the lesson from today. And so uh, let me open the floor for uh, those who want to share uh, what they learned today um, as we get gathered together. This is Adam. Um, I learned the great importance of humility mm. and the importance of taking a lesser role uh, for what is in store for you if God is going to increase others. Um, and then just to asking God to remove all of jealousy from your heart mm. uh, so mm -hmm. that it's not crowd other things that are going on in your life and what God has in purpose for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and maybe, you know, I've changed our description of, it, of, it, of, of a lesser role, but the right role. Um, you know, taking the right role that God has given unto us. And, and you know, Ephesians put this picture that um, about the body and every part of the body having its place. And, and that's manifest even in our church. You know, um, everybody may not preach on a Sunday, but we all have an important role to play. And if we all take our role in, and, and, and do and walk in the gifting that God has called for us, um, what a beautiful uh, thing that will be. Others? Yeah, I really yeah. like when we talked about uh, why we get jealousy and why why do we struggle with jealousy? Mm -hmm. And um, just remembering that loves that that God loves everyone equally and with abundance, and mm -hmm. He has mm -hmm. a plans for every He has a plan for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's not measure our love by material or substantive thing but know that God loves us with an abounding love, um, um, regardless of whatever manifestation it brings. God loves us. And it, it, there may be things that God gives to us that he doesn't give to others. 
And we got to appreciate those things and recognize those are all a part of God's love. So thank you, Brother Louise. This is Anna. Um, I think actually I came in about when we were discussing jealousy. I think everyone shared a lot of um, wonderful things about it that gave me some things uh, to think about. And so I won't um, uh, be too redundant, but I think some things that really stuck out to me that were said was that um, really comparison, it, it is the killer of all joy. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of the root problem is or at least I think it's one of the root problems is not knowing your identity in Christ and what your mm -hmm. purpose or divine giftings are. Mm -hmm. so I think um, one thing that maybe I might encourage others to do as we go through our seasons, because I think we all at one point do wrestle with, with jealousy. And one of the things is that we can do to maybe combat that is to ask God, God, what are my divine giftings? Mm -hmm. um, let me know, like, what is my purpose that I can grow in those things? And then help me to release whatever um covetous thing that i am feeling in the moment because i feel um either less than or like i deserve this or um or that i am incomplete in some way mm -hmm. um, or help me to not undermine the things that you've given me that mm -hmm. make me special and that have given me a defining a defined role and a unique character mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. everyone can be a tax account it's one of the most driest things in the world but here i am loving it every day <laughs> and not can be a musician either um like Luis or shireen these are um very unique um callings that are that are gifts not everyone can can sing or play the piano or the guitar you know and not everyone can do math when they're tired but <laughs> 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 or do math when they're really uh awake so you know yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. You know, and, and I think, you know, one, if I can give an encouragement, it is, I think you, you said this, Anna, is that we will all struggle with it at one point or another. Um, the key thing is that as you mature, you are able to recognize it. And, and, and the Bible says, take every thought captive that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. It's not that you won't have feelings of jealousy. But when they come in, grab them, you know, snap them down and, and don't give them room to grow and to manifest. Uh, it's not that I don't feel feelings of, you know, jealousy or or envy. They, they still happen. But as I mature, I see it and be like, oh, now I know what that is. Let me let me deal with that now before I let it fester and, and let me to be like Saul and start doing crazy things. Um, to try and, and satisfy that idol. Let me let me squash that down. So uh, thank you for that, Anna. Others. <coughs> yes, I would like to um I would like to share Pastor Joe. I think I think each and every one of us has a, a platform that God has given to us mm -hmm. and how we choose to use it. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. I personally has never been been jealous of any anything of anyone, but I have a, a lot of members of, of my household, not my household, of my family. They have a lot of uh, jealousy, each and every one of mm -hmm. them. And so sometimes I see that jealousy inside of them, right? But I don't really say anything. So what, what God has given me to do to continue to encourage Send out the word every day in spite of how you feel and what is going on. You send it out. So I've been doing that. But then I have a brother that comes up and sometimes he comes. He can win. Sometimes you never know how he's going to come. You don't never know if he's going to come with rage. You don't never know if he might just out of anger, just might strike you, which he never had. But you don't know because that's the way that he comes off. So mm -hmm. he came to my house the other day and he, he just... He sort of just went off on me and yelling and screaming and, mm -hmm. and uh, he was supposed to take me somewhere. So he ended up, he wouldn't allow me to get in his car. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so it kind of got me really upset because I went outside with the bottle of water uh, to give him uh, a granola bar, you know, mm -hmm. just to share what I was having. So he said, you're not getting in my car with that. And so we just mm -hmm. went on and on and it would end up, he did he just he he told me I wasn't getting in his car. So when I came in the house, I was I was kind of worked up. Mm -hmm. I, I called call my I said, I'm done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I don't have nothing else to do with him. I mm -hmm. am done with, with, with my brother. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was like, okay, done. 
So the next day would come time to send the message out. Mm. I was just like, well, maybe I won't send a message. Oh, this is, you know, God, God have God give us a little things to go through sometime, right? So yep, I'm just yep. like, you know what? I'm going to send that message out anyway. I don't care how he might not want to receive it. I'm going to send So I sent the message out. So I think it was in a couple of days, a day, a day after he called me. Mm. And he says, um, he apologized. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What happened the other day? He said, I was angry. Mm -hmm. And he said, I took my anger out on you. Mm -hmm. And he's, and, you know, and he knows I'm the one that's always giving and always caring, always love. He knows that about me. And he asked me, he said, would you, would you accept my apology? So mm -hmm. I said, yes. Now, you have to look at it. Maybe if I had not sent, keep sending him that word, I would have showed mm -hmm. my anger towards him. Mm -hmm. But instead... I chose to do what I believe that God would want me to do is to continue mm -hmm. to send him the message because it's not about my Betty. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's all about God. Amen. Amen. So I accept his apology and I thank God for that mm -hmm. because that's just another way that God shows me that I, my Betty, has to learn how to use what God has given to me and I got to use it when, when everything stands against me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my family or whoever, I still got to stand up for the things of God. Amen. Amen. And that is what my bed is choosing to stand for this day, the things of God. Amen. So to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. So, you know, you reiterated, no matter what challenges come against us, stay faithful and stay the course and keep on doing what the Lord has called for us to do. So thank you for that, my Betty. Uh, others who want to share this morning? And um, uh, Sister Joanne uh, uh, Figueroa uh, shared, stay grateful, humble, and renewed each day on the things and role God has uh, called me to do and called us to do to uplift and celebrate those who have great accomplishments. And so uh, good insight from uh, the message here. Thank you, Sister Joanne. Pastor, I would, I, there's a couple of things that stuck out for me, but for mostly it's the humility of David. Mm. Um, he had every right to brag. You know, mm. I killed a lion, I killed a bear. I had just killed the li Goliath. Mm. Um, he could have felt prideful and sort mm -hmm. of fucked up, but he never did. And even when he earned, you know, the tax exemption for his family and the mm. right to marry the king's daughter, he didn't feel worthy in himself and yet God still exalted him. Um, and he had this whole time, it was decades between the time that he was privately anointed king. Mm. He, he had been anointed king, but he was humble enough not to throw it in Saul's face and to mm. serve Saul faithfully right up until mm. Saul's death. Mm. Um, to me, that, that measure of humility um, is humbling. Like, you know, yeah. how do we aspire to be um, that humble, knowing that we're in the right, so to speak, and to trust in the fact that God will exalt us or God will protect us um, mm -hmm. in the meantime. But also that um, the reminder that success does not always mean great wealth. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to face oppression or um, conflict. Uh, but we have to trust that sometimes it's this, it, once we examine ourselves and we're sure that our motives and our our actions are right, that it's the spirit in us that's warring against the spirit, the, the, the ungodly spirit, and to pray for people and to continue to be faithful when we recognize that it's not, it's not about me personally, but it's really about God and trusting God to fight our battles. You know, what wrecks me is the fact that David has been anointed, privately anointed king. God has already said, I've taken my hand off of Saul and David, now you're going to be king. Now, this is where I'm like my namesake, Joseph. If I had been anointed king and Saul is throwing javelins and spear at me, I mean, I'd be like Joseph was like when he was telling his brothers, look, I had a dream and all of you are going to bow down to me. So, I mean, I would have told Saul, look, you sitting there throwing a javelin at me, guess what? God already took his anointing off of you and gave it to me. I mean, that, that would have been me, but 
I, I thank you, Sister Davida, for highlighting that that humility that David has to have um, to know that God had anointed him king, but yet to serve Saul even while that was happening. I mean, that whew, that's that's some next level humility because I, I couldn't have done it. I'm sorry, I'll just be honest with you. I could not have done it. I would have I would have told Saul off. I would have told him about him and his family. And look, you ain't never, you never gonna win it. You never gonna win it. You know, I would let him know it ain't you anymore. And so um thank God I'm not I'm not David. And thank God that God's still working in me. So thank you for that, Sister Davida. Amen. Uh next. <laughs> I, I was thinking that the, the same thing, uh, <laughs> just just as it as it as it goes through, it, and, and it shows the the difference between these two men, because mm -hmm. um, David continues to um, say he won't kill Saul. Mm -hmm. um, this is God's chosen, right? Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. breathing second, Saul is trying to kill David, <laughs> knowing that he could never succeed at this mm -hmm. because God's hand was on David. But it, it, it's just, it, that was just interesting, you know, yeah. to continuously watch as we go through this. It's just that, it, it, it's just that much. It's like, I'm trying to kill you, but I know that I cannot succeed. And right. David, who has the full right, is like, I am not going to do it because God still has you here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, my takeaway was um, run your race, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I love what you said about um, there are going to be people who are better than you, right? And mm. be inspired by them and not, um, I like to say in my common vernacular, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> celebrate, don't hate, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's it, that's it. <laughs> and I, I always say that and I learned that and I, I, and I, I shared that with you, Joe, when we were up in New Hampshire, but yeah. I, I learned a long time ago to especially with women, you know, and, and having girlfriends to to celebrate, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the talents and strengths that they have instead of, you know, being jealous of it. And, mm -hmm. and it really, the blossoming relationships that come out of that when you mm -hmm. take the time to, you know, celebrate and not hate. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those, for both of those, you know, uh, reminders. I'm going. I'm going to use that tagline. Celebrate. Don't hate. You know. Uh, uh, that's a, if, you, if you see that on the Marshall Wall. That's <laughs> we the church. Celebrate the don't hate. <laughs> we we just bringing it down for the folks and, and help, helping them understand in a, in a common way. But we're we're breaking down the word of God in a, in a in a common way. But no. Um. Uh, what a wonderful truth. Um. um a spiritual truth. Um, and, and again, to live that out is, is the challenge that you know, most of us face, um, is to walk out these, these precepts and these instructions. So thank you so much for sharing. Others? This, oh, this yeah. work, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Brother David, go ahead. Uh, go, go ahead, Shereen, and then we'll have Brother David. Basically, to kind of add on to um, what Everybody else is saying about you know comparison, um, like how comparing which does to things like that. Can you, uh, sorry, Shereen, can you come a little bit closer to the mic? You're a little far away, so it's a little hard to hear. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Uh, a, that's a little better. Um, I think just to kind of say like um, um, how to say instead of comparing our strengths and talents with others, you know, like. You having a high expectation is a good thing, but it doesn't mean that you take your talents and compare with other people. Some yeah. people may be saying, you know, like you're at the age of, like my age, and then somebody at the age of 28 or 19, they're like, oh, that that much better. Mm -hmm. They don't know mm -hmm. what they went through, and they don't know what you went through too, what they have to do to get there, like that. So instead of comparing, I think like it's good to evaluate yourself and celebrate that. Everybody is different, you know, everybody has a different sound. Like you wanna get better, then you work on yourself and don't mm -hmm. you celebrate people's differences but you don't compare and be jealous mm -hmm. of other people because I God also has their hands his hands on other people too. So it's very dangerous to compare yourself because it would <coughs> make you 
jealousy, like Saul and David. Like mm-hmm. how Saul, um, you know, he himself, out of jealousy, tried to attack David. But again, David is also God's creation too. Both are. Mm-hmm. You see like how, yeah, God's favor was with David. Because God knew that Saul was jealous. But yeah. at the same time, God had da- God sent David to Saul to come his mind to that yeah. is also God's mercy to the soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my takeaway. And happy Amen. anniversary, Pastor Jeremy. Pastor <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yes, no, um, you know, I, I think about the fact that, you know, we often think the grass is greener on the other side, but I often say that uh, they also have to mow a lot more of the lawn, too, on the other side. And so, you know, <laughs> sometimes you look at it and you're like, oh, the grass is greener, but uh, there's more work, too, involved. And, and and like you said, you never know what they have to go through or what, what challenges they have to wrestle with uh, when you look and you compare against others. So thank you for that. Brother David, you were going to uh, go next. So. Yeah, if, if the grass is greener, it's probably because their lawn is getting better care. <laughs> exactly. You know, what, exactly. What I wanted to say uh, relates to what Sister Joanne had said. It, and it's, it's really two sides of the same coin. It, it says several times that Saul was afraid of David. Mm. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, what could Saul have done instead? Mm. And I'm instantly reminded of 1 John 4, 18. Mm. There, is no, there is no fear in love. Oh. love drives out fear yeah yeah and the older i get and the more i experience the more convinced i am that the key to everything is filling your heart with love love yeah 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 yep, yep. i don't know if it's possible to do that without the indwelling holy spirit yeah yeah i don't know i i do know that with the holy spirit it is very possible to fill your heart with love and when you do it's amazing how many other problems just fall away yeah yep 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 and that's and that's what we constantly have to strive towards and and not just a, a empty love but a love that comes from god and, and that is that is uh um, so so true uh that, that perfect love drives out fear and and it drives out jealousy, drives out envy, drives out all of those things. Uh, and so we want to seek that perfect love. Thank you for that uh, reminder, Brother David. And others. Hi, this is Taja. Hi, this is Taja. Hi. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say that um, I, I just have to second and third pretty much much of what was already said. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also grateful for the reminder that, you know, what God has for you is for you. Um, and, and nobody can take that away from you. Um, you know, David is sitting there minding his business and Saul is trying to, you know, you know kill him. And mm-hmm. that's not what was in the plan of God. And that's not what God had for David. So, um, you know, just that reminder that anything that is not to say that those things won't be formed or that we won't see those things. We won't be aware, um, you know, that somebody is, I don't know, walking in jealousy or whatever the case may be, but that um, even though they have those thoughts or that fe- those feelings, or we have those thoughts or those feelings that we can't interfere with God's plan um, for our lives. And so I'm, I'm grateful for that reminder and also for the reminder that our gifts will make room for us as well. Yeah. You know, I in pastoring, I'm amazed at you know, how many times I've counseled people that the minute they experience opposition, they lose heart and they, you know, they stop doing what God called them to do. And I'm like, you know, opposition <laughs> doesn't mean that the Lord isn't with you. A lot of times, you know, the Lord may be with you, you know, and, and it's just that you're experiencing opposition from the enemy trying to stop God's plans from uh, happening. But, you know, the key thing is that we can't just let uh, opposition when it comes for us to lose heart and and we see this modeled in David where you know when he experienced opposition he stayed faithful to the course and and um, uh, thank you for sister Taja for reminding us of that others All right, uh, let me um, call out for a few last names. Uh, Sister Onyi, anything from you? 
Oh, yeah. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to hear from you. Yeah, congrats on your 15 years. Thank you so much. I your comment, so yeah, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I really liked the part about, um, you know, when God has blessed you, how you may, you know, face opposition or jealousy and envy from other people and how, um, you know, that maybe you're expecting it to go differently because God has blessed you, but you're actually facing a lot of opposition from men and to focus on the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, keep your eye on the prize, I believe was your yeah. quote. Um, and, and I do, yeah, I do generally try to do that in my everyday life. And I'm always very fascinated by how much people give other human beings weight on the way that they are going to mm -hmm. live God's message. Um, yeah. Cause it's just between yeah. you and God only the two of you know um yeah. and it's it's easy to get distracted but it, it was a very worthy note because um you know sometimes i do face that and i'm just like i'm not gonna answer to this person at the end of it like you know i don't <laughs> i don't even see this person like in three weeks or three years so <laughs> keep it in mind so yeah thank you that was great yeah. right. thank you for telling you appreciate yeah. that and and your insight for that Amen. um sister carla anything from you So you know, we uh, pray for your Uncle Raymond, and so hopefully uh, everything is going. Hi, I um actually I didn't catch much of this because I was on the phone with doctors. Okay, um, okay. But um, the pieces that I I, I do um, agree with a lot that has been said. Um, you know, jealousy is is one of those things that will destroy you. Um, mm -hmm. And you know as a counselor and someone who's always uplifting people, you know, my thing mm -hmm. is always be who you are and mm -hmm. work in the gifting that God has given you Amen. Um, Amen. because he's given it to you to bless others. And when we realize that, um, you know, <coughs> things can happen. Mm -hmm. um, as somebody who works with children, you know, I want to see all of them be better than I am. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, it, I, for example, you know, and you guys might remember her, um, Tanya Payne. Mm. It's gonna be, um, she's going to graduate school to be a mm. um, nurse practitioner. Oh, wow. and I remember saying to her in the youth groups, you know, when she started talking about being a nurse, I was like, mm, you're going to be my doctor one day. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those things just uplifting is like, that's her gift. It's her calling. And, and I saw that and was like, mm, I need a new doctor. Keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah that jealousy is a destroyer and everybody needs to always understand that they value they have value god has you know given you um a gift he has blessed you and and the blessing is yours um and you you need to walk in that and what sister joanne had said about um you know uplifting people mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of tearing them down and when you do that things are a lot different amen amen oh. amen thank you so much for for that word and again we'll continue to pray for uncle raymond and 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 we'll believe in god that we we will see you know others as we encourage them become better than us and what a testimony that is that we can we can speak you know life into their destiny and and see them fulfill it and and uh, not just only children but others are you know our peers we can speak into them um you know and again i can't i can't emphasize enough get some jonathan's or um i guess um uh what what would be the female name of it jo Jo uh, Joanne. Joanne. <laughs> get, get some Joannes in your life. <laughs> Joannes. <laughs> you, you need some of them in your life. So thank you so much, Sister Carla, for, for, uh, for that reminder. Um, we're going to give the last word to Sister Kim. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, don't, I don't know where to begin. So, um, it's a great word. Um, I think the bottom line is to piggyback what someone has already said earlier, what God gives to us is mm -hmm. for us. Yep. And if we just concentrate on that, we'd have our hands full and Amen. we'd have <laughs> all, all, yeah, we'd have all the things that we desire just, just from that 
gift, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Um, Amen. And, and Amen. those are all gifts for his glory and for the body of Christ to come together. So um, you kind of just have to focus on on your thing um, mm -hmm. and, and what your gift is to, to um, develop that. Um, but I also want to say um, to everyone, please have a, a safe and happy holiday weekend um, in the midst of all of this. So just be careful yes. if you're outside. Yes. That's all. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kim. And sure. thank you for that, that, that motherly reminder. I got to call you Ma Kim now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, our, our other church mother um, um, to remind us to be safe. Uh, during this time, practice social distancing. Uh, we're going to get through this together, um, but uh, God is faithful. He's our protector. He's our deliverer. He's our healer. And um, we pray that as we go throughout this week and this weekend, that the Lord will be with us. Thank you all for joining us this Sunday. Um, we pray the Lord's blessings upon you. Um, and uh, oh, uh, Sister Davida, uh, you got a praise report if you'd like to like to share. Amen, Pastor. I, I was convicted mm. after the original <laughs> invitation to share a prayer report from this week. Because God is always doing something, right? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. he deserves this space for, for mm. praise. So I've, I've shared before about my frustration of where I am in terms of my job mm. and how God is challenging me to change how I see it and to realize that he's got me there for a reason. Mm. And so I've been you know, changing my mindset and like praying for my job, praying for my center, praying mm -hmm. for my clients. Oh, and wow. this week I had, and I deliberately have to stay away from talking about religion or politics because I, re I represent the company when I'm working. Mm -hmm. um, but this week it was kind of quiet and I had a moment with a client in the private, in a private office and he just happened to share that and we've never talked about the Lord at all, but he just happened to share that he was reading. We talked about what he was reading, and he was saying he was interested in the history of the church, mm. the history of the Bible, mm. and how he had been sort of disillusioned with how he was raised in a church, a particular denomination. And then we got into this whole description about because he opened the door to talk about the difference between religion and relationship with mm. Christ, and we got to share. Um, on Netflix, The Case for Christ and how a journalist had set out to disprove yeah. 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 Who, God, who Christ was and ended up becoming a Christian. And so he not only watched it, he went out and got the book. Oh, wow. And he continued to talk about it. And I was like, Lord. And so now I have an opportunity to pray for him. And as I left that conversation, you know, it was in private again. So it was away from other people who could overhear it and maybe be offended. But it left with me praying for him that whatever seed that was, that God, you know, someone else may come along and water, but that God would ultimately give the harvest mm -hmm. in this young man's life who was seeking him. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, you know, what a blessing and opportunity that is, that wherever we are, God has an opportunity to use us and move through us. And that, mm -hmm. you know, it, was, it had nothing to do with me. And it was all about the... Um, it was God's order, you know, it was that time for God to speak into that young man's life. So mm -hmm. I, I thank God for continually challenging me to just bloom where I'm planted, to allow the Lord to use um, me as a vessel to, to, uh, to introduce him to somebody else. Amen. Amen. You know, as we close today, um, I want to, I think that's a fitting place to close. I want to pray. I, I call it the overflow. Um, I want to pray that we overflow with the spirit of the Lord so that we, we leave seeds everywhere uh, that we go. And, and you, you, you overflow so much that the seeds of, of God's goodness um, flowed into this young man. And I, I want to specifically pray that the seed that was planted in his heart, that God will allow it to blossom and, and, and allow him to come into a full relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and, um, and, and this, I'm not praying just for um, uses to be, but for every one of us that God will allow us to be seed bearers wherever we're planted. Uh, we will plant many seeds and, and many will come to the knowledge of Christ. And so, Father, thank you so much for 
um, this testimony, this praise report. And as we close our time together, we realize that David's success was not for him alone, but David's success overflowed to the places that he went. And so Father, I pray mm -hmm. that that same overflow would be upon us right now, would be upon the members and friends and family of Marshall Fellowship Church so that in everything that we say and that we do, your glory would be revealed in us. Lord, help us as we go throughout this week, strengthen us, lead us, guide us, so that your will may be done in everything that is said and done. It's in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. And everybody said, amen. 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 Have a wonderful week. Love each and every one of you. God bless you. And we will see you soon. Mm -hmm.